Yo, welcome to the Always Better Than Yesterday interview sessions with me, Ryan Hartley, and today my guest is Jason Wood. And Jason and I connected uh, through a good friend of ours, Christine Saunders, sometime. I think we were both brought on a on a podcast for a special Father's Day episode um, back in 2019. So it's great that you can come and join me here on the Always Better Than Yesterday podcast. So, so welcome, my friend. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited. I know I had a fun time when we were on Christine's podcast, so... I was looking forward to this. Amazing, amazing. So do me the honor and privilege of just introducing your good self and just telling us a little bit about your story. Yeah, so uh, my name is Jason Wood. I'm uh, from Virginia here in the in some Newport News, Virginia Beach area. Um, I'm a father to a beautiful five-year-old little girl. Uh, so that's first and foremost. And then uh, I was a U.S. Army combat veteran. I spent about seven years in the United States military. Uh, deployed three of those years to Iraq uh, in mm-hmm. support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Uh, came back from there, uh, started doing, you know, de- Department of Defense contracting. Um, mm-hmm. And along the way, somewhere in between there, I kind of lost my way, got got kind of out of touch with myself, out of touch with my, my fitness and a lot of a lot of other things. And uh, found the sport of opposite force racing and kind of grew that into being kind of a professional athlete. and. Um, and I've been doing that for about two years now, two little over two years, and uh, that's what I enjoy doing. So, uh, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. Love that. I love that. Let's dive into um, serving your nation. What does it mean to you to be a, a veteran? Oh man, I think uh, service in general um, mm-hmm. is something that that I think I really value, um, and I think it's something that, from a veteran's perspective. Um, it's it's the message that as a veteran, even though you're not serving in your military anymore, whether it be you know the Air Force, Army, Marine Corps, wherever it's at, um, the, the the country still needs you. Uh, we still need you to serve in your communities. We still need you to serve your families, um, and we still need you to be there. And 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 you have a skill set as a veteran, and uh, that that many others in the United States don't have. And so. I'm proud of my service. I'm proud of the, the years I spent uh, in the military. Um, and, and I think I wanted to carry that over into my civilian life and, and the lessons I've learned and, and, and to really honor the, the people I lost while I was overseas. And, and, and I've lost since then to, to veteran suicide and things of that sort. So um, I'm, I, I, I'm the, the title veteran, um, I'm very you know, humbled and honored by um, and, and I just, that's the message I want to send out to, to those that are out there that are veterans is we still need you. We still need you in the communities and we still need you to be of service. So, yeah. It's all very real, isn't it? When you talk about the loss of service and, um, you know, much, much respect to you, my friend and, and, and you and your, your colleagues. And I, um, I, I come from a policing background and, uh, whilst it's not going to conflict, um, the the sense of loss is very much a family based thing, isn't it? And um, yeah. I, ju- I just wonder what um, what you've gained from your service. What are some of the things that you've gained? Um, I think the the one of the biggest things I think I've gained from from service is is I think it's that sense of prioritization and that sense of what's really important. Um, mm it took me a while to kind of understand that and come, you know, come to grips with what's really important in life. I think one of the big things, and you hear stories about it from other veterans is you're overseas, uh, you're serving your country, you're, you're getting shot at, you're, you know, you're, you're seeing um, violence and some of the, and you're seeing extreme poverty in some cases, you're seeing a lot of, a lot of things we, we in the United States really kind of take for granted that's happening in other parts of the world. And so when you come back to the United States, you kind of uh, understand your, your, the, the fortune of, 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 you know, things that are around you uh, that mm-hmm. you have easy access to, that you have uh, the, the, you know, the privilege to be able to like, go out and do and, and, and just the freedoms that, that you've been given. Um, I think that is something that from my service, uh, I've kind of developed and learned over time you know, afterwards is, Hey, don't take anything for granted. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's people that are out there in the world that are uh, suffering much more than we are. And, uh, and to be complaining about traffic or complaining about not enough foam on your latte, you know, that's, that's down very way low, 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 low on the, 
list of priorities. And so I think that's just from my years of service, kind of what I've carried over is, Hey, you know, there's, there's things that are really important in life that you need to take care of Mm -hmm. and, and be aware of. And then there's things that, Hey, let's, let's, uh, they, 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 they can take the back burner and not, yeah. not, you know, cause a ruckus. So, yeah. Love that. I'm, um, I'm really passionate and, and curious about leadership and I just, um, I just love to know what you think or what in your experience makes a good leader. Yeah. So it's interesting you say that cause my, my, uh, my PhD that I'm working on right now is in, is in leadership and it's a, fo- it's a background and it's a background in well, focus in business, I should say. Yeah. So, um, so I think from my experience, uh, leadership real, really boils down to your ability to listen to and, and react to the, the needs and, and of your, the people you're leading. Um, it's, it's can you provide them with the resources to be successful? Can you provide them with, with, with the information to be successful? Um, are you making the decisions that are in their best interest? Um, when you take, look at it from you know, the, the higher perspective, I think ultimately as a leader, you're only, you're only as good as the people that you lead. Um, mm. and, and that's just something that I learned in my time in service. I, I was very fortunate to have some of the most wonderful men and women in, in the world uh, mm. that I got the chance to serve with alongside and to lead in, in the combat. And um, they, do, they did such a wonderful job. I got, I got the, I got the accol- accolades and all those kind of things as the leader of, of the unit, but really it boiled down to, to the work they did. And so mm-hmm. my, they made my decision, my decisions easier because what I just had to do was provide them with, you know, like I said, the resources, the information and, 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 and they did the rest. And so I think that's ultimately what I think uh, a good leader is, is somebody who, who listens provides for and and ultimately makes the right decisions yeah love that. how's your phd going it's going i'm uh i'm kind <laughs> of in the last year it's been kind of taking some breaks here and there to, to yeah. kind of you know take care of some other things but but um but i'm at that point where i've started writing the dissertation and mm. and so uh so in my 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 dissertation topic actually revolves around a veteran transition into the the civilian sector and how we could possibly make that a little bit um, easier, uh, mm. you know, by providing them with, with civilian level, you know, certifications, education, things like that sort yeah. while they're still in service. So when they get out, their resumes don't read, you know, all military and, and they can relate to some of the things that are happening in the industry mm. they want to get into when they get out. It's interesting. Is it my, my dad is a, he was a prison officer for a very long time in myself oh, being wow. within the police service. And it's amazing how, um, the thing that connects public service, public servants with just general life and business is that it's, it's only ever about people. Leadership is only ever about people. And, um, yeah, it's really powerful. And I just, um, I'm just really curious to know, um, you know, your transition from the military. I know you say you lost your way uh, in the middle mm-hmm. around your fitness, but the mindset that you must have developed as part of the, the services, how do you apply that to your uh, Spartan races and your obstacle races? Yeah, I, I, that, that's, that's one of the things I think there's, there's a lot of folks that race in Spartan and some of these extreme races that I, I do that are, that are veterans. And I think the mentality that you carry over is especially is that never quit, never leave mm-hmm. anybody behind kind of mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're all competitive. We all want to want to want to do very well, but at the same time, if we're bringing up others as well as ourselves, I think it's a lot more, uh, um, it's a lot more satisfying. Uh, if, if you're able to, to, to bring others up, with yourself. And so I think, uh, the, the, the never quit attitude is definitely there. I, you know, I, 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 I'm very fortunate knock on wood to have not DNF to race, uh, thus far. And I, I, you know, I've done some very difficult ones. Um, but, but I, you know, that, that's one of the big things is, is, you know, get out there and, and what you set out to do, um, and your goal, you know, you want to accomplish that goal. You want to cross that finish line. And that's, that's the military mindset where uh, you, this is the mission, mission first, you know, people always kind of thing. So you go out there, you're going, you want to accomplish that mission and, and, and do, do what you have to do. 
And so uh, there's that, but there's also that, you know, I, I don't want, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not out there just for myself either. I, I want to make sure I'm bringing others up and, 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 and inspiring others in some cases and, and helping others get to, you know, either where I'm at or, 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 you know, past me. Mm. What are some of the core parts of your mindset? Um, I, I think I, I had, I, I got the, 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 the opportunity to be an aide to a two-star general, uh, before I got out of the military. And, um, and he had, uh, three words that, that really rung true for the way I kind of wanted to live my life. And, and the, the they kind of, they kind of, kind of started to formulate the backbone of, of who I wanted to identify myself as. And so those three words were com- committed, dependable and, and relentless. Um, and so, you know, commitment is, is something that's, that's, that's something that I, I really uh, hold high is, is, you know, one, if you say you're going to do something, uh, do it. And then the, the dependable yeah. part kind of plays hand in hand with that. Just yeah. uh, be there. Um, and then the relentless piece, um, it, it, can, it can sometimes come off as aggressive, but, but I, I want to be relentless in the pursuit of my goals and the pursuit of being a better man, the pursuit of being a better father. Um, and, and, and some people might think it's, it's a, it's a harsh word, but it's, it's, it's the truth. It's, it's, we all should be striving as hard as we can and as relentless as we can to be the person that we want to be and to be the, the, you know, the father, the family member, the friend, uh, that we want to be in life. Yeah. You said it's really important to you about family and your daughter. And um, you said that she's, she's five years old. What does it mean to be a dad? What does it mean to be a dad to you? Uh, it's, it's definitely almost the same thing as just being a, a being a leader in, in some ways, mm-hmm. except for, except for that, 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 that tie, that bond that you have with your child is so much stronger. I mean, you, you have those moments where you, you talk about, you know, your friends maybe or other family members talking about, you know, I take a bullet for them or I die for them. But when it comes to your daughter and, and especially with me, it's, it's that, that, that saying really didn't take hold until I had a child. And it's almost like I would do anything to make sure she's taken care of. And then uh, ultimately it's also about showing her, you know, the way, I mean, um, just being a good example, being, being there for them and, and, and being accountable and dependable. Um, you know, I think in this fast paced life, a lot of times we, we start, you know, moving in different directions and, and our children can sometimes get lost in, lost in that, in, in the mix. And, and, you know, especially in this day and age of technology, you know, it's almost easier to just hand them an iPad or a Kindle and mm-hmm. say, here, you do your thing. I'll figure out what I, what I'm going to do. But, but, um, but at the end of the day, I think it's, it's more about spending time with them and, and showing them and, and teaching them and, and, and making sure that they have a good value system and those kind of things that are more important. Uh, and, and that's something that I've definitely learned and developed over time, uh, especially with my daughter is, you know, how, how do I, how do I want to go about that? How do I, what, what do I want to leave her with? Um, and, and, and how do I want, you know, I, she's going to live her own life, but, but what's, what's the way, what's the best way I can show her how to live that life. I love that. Are there any, um, key moments in your, your life, your military service, your career that have, um, really shaped who you are today? There's been a few. Um, I think the, one of the big ones, um, it happened a few years ago, uh, was actually the death of my grandfather. Um, Mm -hmm. I was born, uh, my parents were very young when they had me, uh, Mm -hmm. talking about 16, 18, 17, 19, a a timeframe. Uh, so they, they were working very hard, uh, to put food on the table and to make sure we had a roof over our head. Um, so, um, sorry, got a call. Um, you still there? There we go. Um, so, so it was one of those things where, uh, you know, my parents weren't often, you know, there, there, um, they were, they were focused on other things. They were focused on the necessities and, and don't get me wrong. My parents taught me the lessons of hard work and, and dedication and, 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 and all the, all of those very important values. But I think my grandfather kind of was that, um, 
that mm-hmm. patriarchal father uh, type figure from a from a different perspective. Yeah. Uh, he taught me a lot of other lessons about life, and and um, and, and when he passed away, um, he was you know probably early seventies, had just retired um, mm-hmm. from uh, from from his job after years and years and years of service here in the uh, Newport News shipbuilding. And, um, and he was always a big guy about saving money and, and, and being, you know, being very, you know, frugal in the way, way you lived and, 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 you know, saving for time and those kind of things. And I remember he, he, he passed away from brain cancer and one of the, in this, the near the end, I just remember having a conversation with him, uh, you know, about life and, and one of the big lessons that he threw out there. And it was a, it was a very impactful moment for me was um you know while while you definitely want to save and do the right things for your future don't wait for tomorrow to do things you got you know because you, those, those tomorrows aren't promised i mean he had so many plans to do things with my grandmother in retirement and everything and they held off on doing those kind of things until they were retired and then brain cancer hit and mm-hmm. none of those things happened and so i i think now i live my life a little bit more um, for, for today and for the moment rather than living for tomorrow per se. Yeah. That's really powerful. Thank you for sharing that. And, um, your Instagram, it's, um, it's full of character. It's very, uh, funny, humorous. And at times and you know, how does that play out in your character, that, that sense of humor? Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, I definitely have a, a, a veteran sense of humor in a lot of ways. Uh, we, we can see humor in situations that most people can't. Uh, but, but I, I think, you know, I just want to be, I, I, th- I think I want to be authentic. I want to be true to who I, who I am on a daily basis. And mm-hmm. I want that to kind of show through in my, in my Instagram and the messages I, I put out there. Um, you know, I, I am who I am and, and I don't, I, I don't want somebody to meet me one day somewhere and say, I follow on Instagram and then they, they, they see a totally different person. Um, mm. And so I think that happens a lot with the, in the world that we are in today with social media, everybody gets the, uh, the best version of themselves put out there and, and, and they're, the, you know, they're able to put that on and within in a picture on a single snapshot. Mm-hmm. But uh but I think most people understand that, that, Hey, that's, that's a snapshot in life. That's, that's, there's yeah. 23 and a half hours left in that day. And what is that yeah. person? Who is that person? And so mm. that's what I just try to portray in that one photo, that one message, kind of who I am on a daily basis and, and, mm. and, and kind of uh, where, where I'm at in life. Sometimes there's been times I've posted where it's been very serious and, and, and it's been one of those things where, uh, self-reflection and looking at kind of who I am and, and where I've come from needs to come across. And, and then there's times where it's like, Hey, it's, this is, I feel in a good mood. I feel funny. Let's, let's do something about it. Like, so I I just throw something out like that out there. But, but, um, but I, I think that's the key thing for me is just be authentic, be yourself and, and that'll shine through. And I think people can relate to it better. How much does uh, legacy play a part in your thinking? I think it plays a huge role. I think um, I think it's definitely something that I I want to leave something for my children, um, you know, the people that know me, um, that the, the type of person I was, and that I'd always mm. be there for them, and mm. and and that you know. I just really tried hard at life um, to, to, to accomplish the things that I wanted to accomplish. Uh, I think, again, I think there's a lot of things there that, that I've done wrong in life. I think the legacy people tend to tie with all the things that you've done right in life. But I think there's a lot of times when legacy needs to also be the message that there was a lot of things that I failed at. And mm-hmm. there was a lot of things that I, then those failures I had to learn from and, and grow as a man and as a person from those failures. And so that's another piece of the legacy that I want to leave behind is, Hey, things are going to happen. You're going to mess up. You're going to be, you're going to, you're, you're going to fail at times. And, and it's not how you fail or what you fail. It's how you pick yourself up after you fail and 
what are you going to do about it? Are you going to, are you going to, you know, just focus in on that failure and let that define you for the rest of your life? <laughs> or are you going to try to change your life? And mm -hmm. over my, you know, over my years, I've, I've, you know, I've decided that it, I'm going to let that change my life and change it for the better. And, and that's the kind of legacy I want to leave behind is, is not one of, he focused in on, you know, his successes or he focused in directly on his failures, but he, he was an ever changing, ever growing man that, 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 that proved that you can, you can eventually impact your own fate if you just work at it. Yeah. Love that. My ethos is about helping people be always better than yesterday. I'm just curious to know what that phrase means to you. I think I, I love that phrase and that's what I love about your podcast. They're always better than yesterday. I, I think um, that's, that's something that, that, that we need to start. I think as uh, all of us need to really mm. take a hold of, and it's, it's a message that, 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 Hey, you know, it's, you got to, there, we all have goals. We all have things that we want to accomplish in life, but to go through the rigmarole of having groundhog day, and mm. just get up. I'm going to do the same thing day after day and after day and thinking you're going to get better is if that's not going to happen. If you get up every day and you just do this, the same thing that you did yesterday and you're not seeing improvement in your life and, and what, in what you want to do, it, you're, you're just living. You're, you're not, mm. you're just, I, I should say you're just existing. Mm. You're not truly living. And so always better than yesterday for me is, is when I wake up, in the morning, the first thing, you know, is, is how can I beat the person I was yesterday? How can I be a better man than I was yesterday? How can I be a better father than I was yesterday? And, and what are the steps do, what steps do I need to take to accomplish that in, in, today? So I'm very fortunate that I get a chance to go out and do competitions and things of that sort. So it's, it's how do I beat the guy sometimes that was that, that did that same exact race three weeks ago? It's, it's, I want to be better than that guy. So what do I need to do in the next three weeks before the next race to beat that guy? And so I, I think if I, if you just keep living that mindset, you're, you're going to eventually become the better person that you want to be. You're going to eventually become the, the overall, you know, you're going to meet your, meet your, meet your overall goal. So it's just, waking up in the morning every day and saying, how do I beat that guy? How, how do I better myself? And then, and, 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 and improving yourself, you eventually improve everything around you. I love that. Almost the, uh, almost the triangle of committed, dependable and relentless is in effect. Why I talk about just keep showing up. You yeah. Know, depend on yourself, keep showing up. And how does that kind of show up when there must be days when you don't want to go to the gym, there must be days when you're in the gym on your own, it's dark times. How do you keep yourself going? Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think it's that, that, that whole mindset of, of, I, I don't want to go to the gym, but I know if I don't go to the gym, then I, I, I lose, you know, in, in some cases, especially when during a training plan, it's like, I'm going to lose that opportunity to be better. Mm. And there's people out there that are working harder than me right now to, to accomplish some of the same goals. And so I, I don't want to, I don't want to be left behind. I, I don't want to be that guy that, 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 that gets outworked. Uh, and that's one of the things that, Hey, you may beat me in a race. I'm, you know, I'm not going to be the, the world champion, but I'll be damned if I, if I don't work as hard as you in my own way. Yeah. I think most people think that, that, that working, you know, working hard, you know, eventually uh, they're comparing themselves to, to you know, world champions and all these other different kinds of folks, whether you're an actor or whatever you do, um, they compare a lot, but, hard work it can be done in your own way i mean it's just how do you define it for yourself and and i think for me the the motivation is is i got to beat myself one i want i want i want to beat the person i was yesterday and then two there's people out there around me that that are doing the work so why shouldn't i be doing the work and they we all have excuses we all have <laughs> things that reasons why we can't do things but but ultimately if you, if it's a priority and you want it bad enough, you're going to make the time and, and, 
And I think that's just how I live my days. <laughs> yeah, I love that. How do people connect with you? Where do they find you? How can they be inspired by you? Yeah, so uh, the main way is uh, Instagram. Um, my my handle is J Floyd Wood. So just the letter J F L O Y D W O O D, um, and and that's that's how I go about you know spreading my message, I guess. Um, yeah. and, and that's where you can find most of my content. And, and um, you know, I tell everybody all the time, feel free to reach out to me. I think the biggest thing that inspires me and keeps me going, and you met, mm-hmm. you talk about just going to the gym and what keeps you going. Um, is the messages I get from others about, oh, you know, my story and how it's, how it's inspired them to, yeah. to change their lives and to do their first Spartan race or to do different things that, mm-hmm. that they haven't done in the past. And they're, they, they're willing to take that chance because three years ago I was willing to take that chance and, and I've come a long way. And so, you know, it's, 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 it's good to see people you know, that, that I've been able to inspire, take that first step. And in some cases they come back to me a year later and, uh, you know, sometimes they're beating me in races at that point. So it's, it's, it's definitely been a, been, been a, been a blessing, I guess, to, to, to watch just the way, you know, my life has impacted others and, and, and the message that I get. So Instagram's the way to go. <laughs> Love that, mate. Um, Firstly, thank you for taking the time and, and spending it with us. Um, and secondly, do me the honor and the privilege of leaving a, a final thought from your good self. Yeah, so I think one of the things I, I, I try to tell everyone is, 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 especially when you talk about being in kind of the new year and a new decade and, mm-hmm. and everything is, 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 you know, ultimately, we've all set goals, we've all set resolutions, we all have things we want to accomplish. Um, and we, t- we tend to take a look at the bigger holistic goal. Um, my, the, the best way that I took, the best approach I took to that was I had a goal of I wanted to compete in the world championship for Spartan race. Um, and, and when I first started, you know, three years ago, it took me two years to get there, but uh, it was, it was, it, it had to be smaller steps. It's, it's, you know, my, I had the big goal, but what am I going to do to get there? So, uh, break, break your, break your bigger goals into smaller, more accomplishable goals and, you know, break it out by a week, by months. Like if I want to lose 50 pounds, let's lose just one pound this week. And then, mm-hmm. uh, you know, accomplish those mini goals. And then, um, before, before you know it, you'll get there. Um, and I think it's just, um, it's, it's a better approach for me at least to the way I, I approach how I wanted to accomplish things. So, um, if you look at it holistically, it can be too big sometimes, but if you break it down into smaller goals and, 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 and you just attack it in that way, then, then I think uh, you're going to be more likely to accomplish it. So just as the new year kicks off and, and as the new decade kicks off, anything you want to accomplish, just take it one step at a time and, and you'll eventually meet that bigger goal. Love that. Great advice. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for taking the time. Appreciate it. Much love, brother. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs>